Hi, welcome to Android. Today we will be covering about Traveler Assistant version 1.1. And uh, the concepts to cover is user interaction via buttons and menus. So goal for this project, add various buttons and menus in main screen and play with it. But most important thing is that how do we add the code so that we can understand and interact with these buttons and menus. So for that, the step one is add a couple of buttons in XML layout of main screen activity, organize the buttons placement. So I think we have done these two in already in the previous session. What we have not done is step three, add code inside main scene activity to handle click event of the button, create menus using XML, add code inside main screen activity to handle click event of the menu, then we'll test the buttons and menus. And uh, then there is another way to create menus, one menu using XML and another menu using Android APIs. So there are two different ways to create menu in the screen. And then we'll test if the menus are working properly or not. So the idea is very basic and simple. Learn about creating buttons and menus in a Android screen or activity. So let us start with that. Now, in Android, handling user interaction events means that somebody will press a key. Key is that keypad button on the phone. A screen touches, touches the screen, clicks the button, so or clicks the menu as well. So this one is basically button clicks or or menu clicks okay button clicks or menu clicks so this is what we are going to discuss about android exposes several virtual event handlers listed here that let you interact to the user input but there are two ways to do this. Either you can use the standard set of listener methods invoked for each event in an activity, or you can define a listener class or method for each view like button. So either you can define your own listener classes, and listener classes are a concept which comes from Java, where you define a small listener class which will handle the interaction for the button. So these are the various topics we'll be discussing today. Now, let us see that these are the various topics. Now, by default in Android, each activity has a listener methods called on key down, on key up, on trackball event, on touch event, motion event, on back pressed. So, these are the various things which are there in this one. Now, before we get into this one, let me just explain you that what happens. So, every time somebody will do something, there is a, a click happens, click, whether through button, or through menu. In both the case, there are two ways to handle. One way is called using predefined listener methods. 
listener methods and other is define a listener class let us put it new listener class so you have to create this listener class so depending on how you want to handle it either you can use the predefined listener methods or you can define a new listener class and then you can capture that click event of a button and menu and you can do whatever business logic you want to put it so that is what it basically means now these are the predefined listener methods these are predefined listener methods in the activity class itself so you have to just implement this method on key down this get triggered when an any device key is pressed and not handled by any of the views inside of the activity so if any of the view is not having its own listener event listener class then on key down get triggered how is on key up is triggered when a user releases a pressed key and not handled by any of the views inside of the activity now if you are not very clear about this line think about this okay so let us assume that there is an activity and in this activity there is a button okay now two possibilities is there either this button has its own listener methods listener class sorry or it has predefined method in the activity sorry this is in the activity so the activity has here on key down now what happens is that if a button is clicked then first it will check does it have its own listener class or not if there is configured its own listener class then this get triggered and the responsibility to do the business logic based on the button click is goes to this one but if this is not there then the responsibility to do this it will check is there a on key down method implemented here if it is implemented then it will go to this one so that's all the android does the logic building that first try to check the listener class if not then go to the on key down method and do whatever logic is put here so that's all pretty much what the logic of delegating the click event happens and these are the various methods which you can implement into your activity one of the most important activity method here what you will find which is not directly related to clicking which is used very frequently is this one on back pressed so this one let us assume you want to write a screen and whenever somebody presses the back button you want to do something then that logic you should put it inside the on back pressed method and all of these methods are put inside the activity window here itself let me just show you and this one yeah so if i come here and say on back pressed now another thing uh if you want to know that we know that this is a activity class so on back pressed will come here now 
whatever logic you want to put here, you should put it here. Okay. Now, before, uh, in fact, there is one more very important thing which I should explain it here, and that is the very basic code structure of the activity itself. Now, let me just explain you a little bit uh, this part. What is the meaning of these classes, methods, and structure, basic structure? So we'll come back to the uh, buttons and menu. So hang around, don't worry. So this is your Java code or Android code, right? In this Android code, it starts with the package com Isaac TA. And then there is a, uh, all these imports are here. Most important thing is that this is the activity class. This is the super class for all activity. Okay, so you should always extend this guy to create any new activity. So if you want to create a new activity, you should always say public class, some class name extends activity. Now, when you do this, there are a lot of methods which are in the activity class which get inherited to your class. And one of those classes could be like this. You see this method? Uh, override it means that this has come from the super class this has come from the super class so what generally we do is that when we write a new activity we extend the super class base class you uh, super class for all activity but it is not a super class like object in the Java object is just still the super class of all the classes in Java in Android but here activity is the base class for developing any act, uh, activity. So on create, on back paste. Now, a activity must have on create method. So this is on create method is must. And the second thing is that you should always call this super dot on create. In Java world, this super dot on create is not mandatory to call a super uh, class method, but in Android, especially for on create and all the life cycle stages which are there, requires that it must be created. Now, here it also brings to a important concept that what is activity life cycle. So let us spend a little bit time on activity life cycle. We'll talk about activity lifecycle as well. We'll talk about uh, how the structure of the code will look like. And uh, we'll also talk about menus and button. Now, this is the starting point. This is also the starting point. It is must and this is... It is also the starting point of starting point of executing your activity. So when your activity is launched by Android, it starts running here. Okay? So just be uh, clear that in Java you might have seen there is a method called main method and in that main method the execution start. But in Android, whenever the a screen is launched, it starts with on create. There are few things which we have to do. And uh, let me just comment out this one or delete for the time being to reduce the clutter. So there are few things will happen. First. activity or rather blank activity 
created. When you call the one create is created, created. Now what is this? What happens at this stage? Loads the UI layout. Okay. And then we'll do something here to create objects objects for various views also called widgets also called controls of UI like button text box for all of these we will create objects okay and then that is step one step one is this one step two is this one step three is this one step four what we'll do is that we'll put logic to handle click so let me just go walk through this how the structure of the logic first on create is called when blank activity is created then set content view there is a method coming from the super classes which loads the ui layout file and that is done by r.layout.main so what is this this is nothing but the same thing which you see here this one this main.xml so this is the main.xml which is getting loaded at this point Now, this exactly this main.xml file, this UI layout, that is the, this XML and the corresponding representation get loaded inside this file called travelerassistantactivity.java. So, what you are doing is basically, you are pretty much trying to load this XML file here. Okay? Now, by doing that, you are trying to load that layout. And next thing what we'll do is that we'll create the objects for all the elements which are there in that layout. So, what are the various layouts I am interested in? So, what I am going to do is that I am going to create an object for this, for this, 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 and this in Java, in this class. So, that is what is my next responsibility. And for that, 